saved. Matthew chapter 25, verse 34. We'll look at it in this passage. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then, ha then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. Literal, physical throne. It's actually going to happen. And before him shall be gathered all nations. Now, why would he say that if this is a spiritual kingdom? That's what happens if you look back in history and you look at any emperor or any king who has conquered the rest of the world. They, have, they deal with all nations, and all nations answer to that king. And that's exactly what's going to happen in this instance. All, all the nations in the world are going to answer to Jesus Christ. And before him shall be gathered all nations, verse 32, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. From the foundation. So ever since the beginning in Genesis chapter six, Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, when you talk about this seed coming, this seed is Jesus Christ. The king is coming. And here it is. Matthew chapter 5, verse 5. Literal physical kingdom. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. It doesn't say some spiritual realm there, not some state of enlightenment. They're actually going to inherit the earth. And that's a millennial passage. Matthew chapter 5, verses, Matthew chapter 5 through 7. It's what's it's what we call the constitution for the millennium. There's a lot of passages in there that they, they really don't, you know, you think you take the words of Jesus, and of course that would, we can apply all those. And actually, church doctrine comes, God reveals, Jesus Christ reveals that to Paul. These doctrines here, remember the kingdom of heaven is at hand when Jesus shows up. So these, a lot of these teachings of Jesus are about the kingdom. They're not about the kingdom of God, the spiritual kingdom that we're in right now. They're about the literal physical kingdom during the millennial reign that's going to happen at the end because not only is it going to happen at the end, but when Jesus came, it was actually at hand right then. If they would have accepted him as a Messiah, he could have set up his literal earthly physical kingdom, but they rejected him. So blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. It's a literal physical prophecy that's absolutely true. That's what's going to happen. The meek will inherit the earth. Job 19.25 says, I know that my Redeemer liveth. And that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. So Job, which is, uh, most scholars believe chronologically, this is the first book written. Job even knew that his Redeemer was alive. And by the way, which means that Jesus Christ existed before he was born as a man. So Jesus Christ always existed because he is God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And Job also knows that at the latter day, at the, at the end times, he's going to stand on the earth. So it's not some spiritual kingdom. It's just some s spiritual, anecdotal, allegorical kingdom that doesn't really mean what it says. It really means what it says. When they talk about the kingdom and Jesus Christ coming and ruling in Jerusalem and sitting on the throne and uh, making the earth his footstool, the literal physical kingdom, it's actually going to happen. Now look here in Revelation chapter 19. We find, let's look at the highlighted passages, and you can go back and read these. This is Revelation 19, 11 through 21. Just these highlighted passages that I have underlined and in bold. In verse 11, we find out that Christ is going to come back, and he's going to judge, and he's going to make war. We find out he's on, ver which if you're going to take over the whole world, that's exactly what you're going to do. In verse 12, he has many crowns on his head. Why? Because he's got the authority now. He's the king. He's the king of kings. In verse 13, he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name was called the Word of God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. They had the, they had the living Word in flesh, which their hands have handled the Word of life, First John 1, 1. We have the paper Word. We have the Word written down in ink and paper, which God has given to us. So this is the word of God, Jesus Christ. Verse 14, And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses. Now do you remember John 18, 36, which said, If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight? Well, this is what's happening right now. In verse 14, The armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses. When he comes back the second time, his servants are going to fight because his kingdom will be of this world. Verse 15, once again dealing with the nations. Verse 16, King of kings and Lord of lords. Who's the boss there? Jesus Christ. King of kings and Lord of lords. Literal, physical king. And by the way, in your Bible, you'll notice in the King James Bible that this passage is all caps. And you'll also notice that the last thing to appear in all caps in the Bible 
is this phrase, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Also, if you look, the first thing that ever appears in your Bible in all caps is I am that I am. And if you put those two all caps phrases together, you have the theme of the Bible in a nutshell. I am that I am, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. That's the theme of the Bible. Verse 18, you're going to eat the flesh of kings because it's actually going to conquer them. A literal physical conquering. Is, uh, what this is talking about is the fowls here in verse 17. They're going to eat the flesh of kings. Literal physical dead bodies that the birds are eating. Verse 19, I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. Now this is not some spiritual prophecy. Literal physical armies, literal physical prophecy. Verse 20, and the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them, had received the mark of the beast, and they that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive in the lake of fire, burning with brimstone. So when Jesus Christ takes charge, he takes care of the enemy too. He gets rid of them. I remember in Second Thessalonians chapter 2, when we're talking about the Antichrist having all power, he says, "Who He shall destroy with the spirit of his mouth and with the brightness of his coming. Here's the spirit of his mouth right here, verse 21. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth. And the fowls were filled with their flesh. He's called the word of God. We know the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Ephesians chapter 6 says, And the word of God, which is the sword of the spirit. And Second Thessalonians 2 is going to destroy him with the spirit of his mouth, which sword proceeded out of his mouth. And that's how it's going to happen. He's going to destroy him with the spirit of his mouth. Revelation chapter 20, verse 1 through 4. Look there at verse 2. Down at the bottom, it says, he, uh, verse 2 in the middle, it says, And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and bound him a thousand years. Verse 4, he sees thrones. What do you see thrones for? Because you're dealing with kingdoms, literal physical kingdoms. Look at the end. And the end of verse 4. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. As a literal physical reign. We're talking about the millennial reign. That's what we're talking about. That's where we get that from. Revelation chapter 20 verse 4. And they lived with Christ a thousand years. Now years. Uh, years is annum. Like annual. And this is. And then thousand is mill. Mill annum. That's where we get the word millennium. So when you hear people talking about the, the thousand year millennial reign of Christ. The millennium. Or the millennial reign. That's what they're talking about. The thousand years. They. Live and reign with Christ a thousand years. Revelation 26. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. For on such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. There it is. That's where we get that phrase from, the millennial reign of Jesus Christ.